This week on Engineering Newswire, brought to you by Memory Protection Devices. We're customizing airplane climates, streaming songs from Mars, and building planes that avoid crashes. The Air Force is developing a new technology that will take control of planes when the craft is being directed into the ground or other terrain. The system is designed to take over in such an event, recover the aircraft to a level position, and return control to the pilot afterwards. The Air Force estimates about 250 fighter crashes occur where pilots misjudge the terrain they're flying over or lose consciousness. The Automatic Ground Collision Avoidance System uses a card containing GPS and topographic maps to digitally detect when the ground or obstacles are approaching. The Air Force plans to have this technology implemented by 2014 in their entire F-16 fleet, with expectations for integration in passenger jets after that. I just worry about the day when fighter pilots or fighter jets learn to fly themselves. Will I Am has premiered his newest single, Reach for the Stars from Mars, marking the event as the first musical broadcast from another planet. The song had been uploaded to the rover, which landed near the equator of Mars and played back a journey of some 700 million miles. This isn't the first time NASA has sent music deep into the cosmos. In 1977, Golden Records were placed abroad the Voyager spacecraft on the remote chance they could be discovered by intelligent civilizations. In 2008, the space agency beamed the Beatles across the universe into space to commemorate its 40th anniversary. From the Beatles to a Black Eyed Peas, my how the mighty NASA has fallen. The indoor climate on airplanes is terrible. As a matter of fact, just about everything associated with the flights is a jumping off point for comedians, columnists, and curmudgeons alike. The plane is often hot and humid and likely reeks of whatever is emanating off of the mouth breather beside you. In the future, passengers will be able to make changes to those variables that make the skies less than friendly. Researchers at the Fraunhofer Institute are working on individual climate and temperature controls that will allow passengers to adjust air supply to their own personal preference. Several technologies are currently being developed by a consortium of nine partners for, uh, from universities and the aviation industry, including air purifiers that filter the air, optimize vents that allow fresh air to flow, and seat heaters much like the ones found in cars. They're even working on seat ventilation that draws the heat and moisture between the body and seat, keeping the seat comfortably cool. If only we could now combat the odiferous, as I typically sit next to the businessman headed home from a bender. Georgia Tech has developed a self-charging power cell that directly converts mechanical energy to chemical energy. This allows power storage until it is released as electrical current. This new system eliminates the need to convert mechanical energy to electrical energy for charging a battery and in turn uses mechanical energy more efficiently. Using a piezoelectric membrane, the power cell drives lithium ions from one side of the cell to the other when the membrane is deformed by mechanical stress. The lithium ions driven through the polarized membrane are directly stored as chemical energy using an electromechanical process. By harnessing a comprehensive force, such as a shoe hitting the pavement from a person walking, the power cell generates enough current to power a small calculator. A power cell the size of a coin can power small electrical devices and could have military applications for soldiers who might one day recharge battery-powered equipment as they walk. University of Missouri researchers have developed new software using smartphones, GPS, and imaging abilities that can not only determine the exact location of distant objects, but monitor the speed and direction of moving objects. The software could impact everyone from soldiers trying to target enemy locations to golfers judging the distance to the green, or even biologists documenting the location of rare animals without disturbing them. The targeting and tracking software is not yet available commercially, but a prototype version is currently being tested so that more algorithms can be developed to improve the speed and accuracy. Just what we need, more software that tells us exactly where we are and precisely where we're headed. The Department of Homeland Security has scheduled a series of tests in Boston subways to measure the real-world performance of new sensors recently developed to detect biological agents. The Detect to Protect Bio Detection Project is assessing several sensors from multiple manufacturers to alert authorities to the presence of biological material. The devices have been designed to identify and confirm the release of biological agents within minutes. 
The study involves the release of small amounts of innocuous killed bacterium in subway stations in the Boston area to tell how well the sensors work. According to the DHS, the particles released in the stations will dissipate quickly. The study has been met, met with mixed interest, but bodes well for doomsday enthusiasts running office pools over the impending zombie apocalypse. For PD&D TV, I'm Chris Fox, and this has been your Engineering Newswire.